I plopped down onto my favorite chair, a bowl of popcorn on my lap, as thunder cracked outside, lightning briefly lighting up the room. I could hear the sound of rainfall outside, beating against my window pane as I lit a candle. Everything was absolutely perfect for a movie night just by myself. I poured some wine as I pressed play and the opening credits began to roll on the screen. A title appeared in the movies. It was a favorite old film of mine, released in 1947. I was keen on old Hollywood, the Golden Age era. I loved the characters, the glamour, and the style. Often, I would imagine myself in one of these films, perhaps playing the main character or a charismatic side character. I felt overcome by a chill as I entertained the idea. The black and white film opened on a woman, her hair slightly wavy, looking silky on camera, her face ice white and adorned with perfect makeup, her pouty lips and large gazing eyes being the most prominent features on her round face. She cracked a smile as she peered at herself through a vanity mirror, pursing her lips just to touch up on her makeup. The main title song played as she said to her reflection, Oh, how I'd love to be in the movies. She smiled one last time before getting up, whipping her scarf over her shoulder as she strutted towards a liquor cabinet to pour herself a drink. Her nails were painted and she wore a classy and elegant evening gown with a low neck. Her wrist was adorned with a diamond bracelet. Her perfect, almost porcelain, neck was accented by a small string of pearls. The dress that complemented her petite body was in the style of a long, flowing evening gown with lace trim, short see-through sleeves, and a see-through hem that tickled her ankles. Hearing a knock on the door, she strutted delicately, arms up, wrists limp, in small strides in her modest three-inch high sling back, peep-toe heels to answer. She opened the door to a most handsome man in black tie attire. Hello there, dear. He smiled at her. Well, hello Reginald. Please, do come in. She gestured him into the room, asking further, peering her big eyes at him, walking back towards the liquor cabinet. Can I pour you a drink? Oh, yes, please, Reginald responded, following her. I felt a chill return to me as I thought of myself being in that room with the two characters. Perhaps, I wondered, I could be their friend who is to accompany them to the lavish party they are to attend? My body felt awed at the thought. It was only fiction to me, but something about the sentiment just felt natural. I took a sip of wine as I started to feel uneasy in my chair, which was odd. It was my favorite chair. Why would I feel awkward and unsteady? Lightning lit up the room once again as thunder cracked outside, shaking me to my core. I watched as a spark hovered outside my window, making its way through the glass. I stared in awe as it followed the window pane and down the wall towards the power outlet. The spark grazed along the wire attached to the TV and reached the TV itself, causing the picture to brighten immensely, almost blinding me. I felt overcome by a surge of energy, bucking, and knocking the popcorn onto the floor. Damn it, I muttered, leaning over to pick up the bowl and clean some of the mess. At the same time, I felt my body tingling all over. I was stopped dead as I began to feel dizzy. Slumping back into my chair, the dialogue in the movie carrying on, and the screen insanely bright, I feel myself shifting in place a bit. I looked down and noticed my arm hairs receding before my eyes. Before too long, I see them recede entirely. Watching, shocked, I feel my face begin to tingle oddly as I put one hand up to feel it. It felt totally smooth. There was no sign of stubble anywhere. With one hand feeling my face and neck, I noticed the shape of my other hand begin to alter. It became smaller and thinner. My fingers seemed to lengthen and become more delicate as my nails grew slightly longer, my knuckles becoming narrow and petite. My nails suddenly appeared glossier, with the ends becoming ice white, perfectly manicured. My other hand fell as I noticed my arms becoming thinner, losing all of their muscle, fat bubbling up just beneath my skin. I motioned to get up, but was instantly distracted by my butt's expansion and my pants against my chair. My hips were widening further towards the sides of the chair as I moved my hands downwards to feel my expanding lumps. 
Gasping, I gripped the thick flesh with my now dainty fingers and felt my nails dig into the softness below. Now, I felt something soft tickling my ears and heard a slight rustling sound as I reached up to see what was the fuss. My hair had become much thicker, with much more volume than before, and it was growing longer at an alarming rate. I felt my hair graze my shoulders as some of it swept across my forehead, my face becoming tighter. I gripped my head harder and looked down at my chest as I felt a weight begin to form under my now baggy shirt. My hands darted to my chest as my torso shrank and my legs shifted on themselves, my hips widening out, angling my thighs inwards, and causing my legs to close as my ankles buckled inwards. I reached down towards my chest and, through the loose fabric, felt two mounds of soft, supple flesh expanding outwards as I moved towards my waist, following it inwards and then outwards against my wide hips. Deciding I had to see what was happening, I ditched the chair and the movie briefly and ran hastily into the bathroom. The reflection that greeted me was that of a young woman who looked like she could have been my twin sister. My jaw dropped as I let my small arms hang to my sides. My brows began to thin out, rising into feminine arches over my bigger eyes as my lashes grew out, flaring over my eyelids. My hair was very long now, reaching to the middle of my back and becoming wavy and silky smooth. My lips plumped up as my nose turned up drastically, shrinking, as my cheek and jawbones softened and rounded out into a perfectly feminine look. I could still recognize myself, but I was no longer myself. My mouth forming a wide O shape, I realized and processed what was happening and, thinking I was insane to be seeing what I was seeing, reached my hand down my pants and felt my balls pull up inside. My penis was tiny. I grasped it with two fingers, trying to tug at it as it shrank and shrank until I felt it rise and two lips of flesh formed by its sides where I knew my scrotum should be. I gasped as my little member pulled back inside and my new vagina blossomed like a budding flower, quickly lubricating itself with an alien sort of wetness. Looking back towards the mirror, hands still fondling my newly forming vagina, I saw that everything in the bathroom seemed higher. I watched as my height was shrinking before me. My socks were loosening around my feet as my height shrank further and further. I darted back into my room and grabbed a measuring tape I kept in my closet. Setting the end on the floor between my heel and the wall, I reached up towards the top of my head full of voluminous hair and placed my thumb to mark my new height. I turned to read it and saw that my thumb was held at the 5 feet 5 inches mark. I turned again to realize I was still shrinking. My socks began to slip off of my feet as my shirt hung around me, my pants beginning to lose their grip. My body was still shrinking as well, becoming more and more petite. My breasts started to perk up as the final changes softened my face, completely formed my vagina, erased my Adam's apple, and I took another measurement. Five feet two inches. What the fuck? I yelled, freaking out at the sound of my new voice, a soft and breathy soprano. Wincing a bit, I saw myself stop shrinking as I slid in my socks, my pants falling to my ankles, and took another measurement, which came up five foot even. I measured one last time to double check and it came out 4 feet 11 inches. My eyes going wide as I caught my reflection again, I measured again to make sure, 4 feet 11 inches. I was tiny. I felt tiny, but also large in the wrong places. I let the tape measure drop and could still hear the movie playing in my living room. I slowly walked out, stepping out of my pants, while my boxers fell down my legs. Almost tripping, and in a daze, I kicked them off as well as a sock. I pulled my other sock off and let my shirt hang down, it reaching mid-thigh now, hanging like a dress almost. Leaving the trail of clothes behind, and whipping my hair off of my face and behind one ear, I grabbed my glass of wine and took a long gulp before plopping back into my chair. I almost fell backwards as I realized my feet dangled off of the floor now. I arched my feet and planted my little manicured toes onto the carpet to gain some balance as the characters in the movie spoke. Well, Reginald, you may be in luck because my friend Alice is just about to arrive, the leading lady winked at Reginald as the screen faded to black. I couldn't possibly distract myself at this point, but I do try to continue watching, but the screen remains black, but seems bright to me. I feel an off tugging in my shirt as I look down. 
The film had seemingly stopped, and I watched my shirt begin to shrink before my eyes. I heard a rustling in the hallway as I turned my head and became overwhelmed with horror at the sight of my two big clothes inching towards me, taking flight, and then rushing at me. I held my arms up towards them, as if to defend myself, only to find them sliding under my feet. My boxers inched up my hairless, immaculately shapely legs and reoriented themselves around my waist, scooting over my butt. I lifted my shirt, which was beginning to change color, graying out. I saw my boxers shrink and becoming small panties, encasing my girly parts, them too becoming more gray in color, a lace fringe forming around them. My pants followed up my legs and connected to my shirt, becoming the same shade as my shirt as the legs fused together. It appeared my shirt and pants were forming a dress. Both of my socks split in two and one set wrapped themselves around my tiny feet and started to elongate up my legs, neutralizing in color as well. The other two rose up above my head and I put my arms out to swat them away, but also noticed my skin had changed, losing its color, and becoming more gray in tone in concert with the rest of me. The TV burst into violent static as the two socks began to morph in midair, turning white, and inserting themselves into my new dress, which was becoming more adorned with lace. I felt them, lifting my dress's now lower neckline to see a bra form underneath, a matching white slip covering them, moving down my body. The dress formed two delicate cups over my breasts as the sleeves dipped off of my narrow shoulders. I felt my hair flying around above my as a prickle hit each earlobe. I was that my wine glass had emptied, the wine now floating in a liquid mass before my face, slowly approaching. Two gold earrings inserted themselves into my ears, as my nails seemed to darken in shade. I felt smooth silk run its way up to my thighs and become delicate stockings, covering my little feet and plump legs. The dress's neckline ruffled out a bit, forming an ornate detail as the hem receded towards my calves. I stood up and looked down at my body, lit up by the static on the TV. I was wearing an evening gown and stockings, complete with a bra and panties set, as well as vintage underdress. The wine flew into my face and splashed against my eyes, brows, lips, and cheeks. I licked my lips, feeling that their texture had changed. I slowly turned back towards the bathroom, swaying my hips this time, and turned the corner to catch the mirror. I appeared fully as a beautiful young woman, still resembling my twin, but my skin and clothes lacked any color at all. I looked black and white, like I was inside an old movie. I heard something else clambering in the hallway and exited the bathroom to see what was the fuss only to witness my shoes had flown from my front door over towards me, slipping themselves awkwardly onto my feet. They felt giant at first, but began to shrink, the tops receding and the back disappearing, the toes opening and turning black. They slowly reached my new shoe size and hugged my feet as they transformed into a low two-inch peep toe set of heels. Bending over, curious, I took one off of my soft silky covered foot and looked for a size. Towards the back on the inside the character's US4 were displayed. I slipped the shoe back on and sighed a bit less horrified now. As I crept back into the living room, lit by the TV static, I began to feel warm inside. I walked over directly in front of the TV and bent down to look into it. I could see my reflection in it as if it were a mirror, and in color. My face was beautifully adorned with makeup consisting of green eyeshadow, rose red cheeks, and matte red lipstick. I moved closer to find my dress's neckline revealed a vibrant yellow hue. Further curious, I lifted my right arm and inched my finger closer to the screen. Touching it, I realized I felt nothing. I pushed further and looked in shock as my finger entered the screen, turning black and white once again. I pulled my finger back and gazed at a glance. It seemed unaffected by this paranormal occurrence. Feeling ambitious now, I thrust my entire arm into the TV and began to feel it pulling my closer. Shocked, but without hesitation, I let the mysterious force consume me. I stuck my head through and was immediately greeted by a door, which seemed gray at first, but as I brought myself further inside, I saw that some color was beginning to return. I crept inside my TV, 
pulling the rest of my body through and stepping inside one leg at a time. The door now appeared fully in color. I looked down at myself to see in first person my bright yellow, low-neck evening gown, with my auburn hair gently falling just above my breasts and down to my feet where there I stood in my small, black peep toe heels. I reached my arms out in front of me to see their texture and color. They were thin and hairless, my nails painted a vibrant shade of red. Taking a deep breath and even smiling to myself, I stepped towards the door and knocked delicately. Taking one last deep breath, I cracked a small smile and straightened my dress and waited until a woman opened the door, the same woman from the movie, revealing Reginald in the ornate room behind her. Oh, Alice. Finally. I'm so glad you could make it. She led me into the room, closing the door, I looked around at the bright colors and instantly recognized I had been inserted into the movie. Hello, Martha. Thank you for inviting me. I replied, playing the part to my delight. Please, have a seat, meet Reginald, a dear friend. He's been waiting to meet you. Martha told me. He has? Well, then. I say, smiling brightly, walking over to greet him, I'm Alice. Martha and I are dear friends. I present my dainty hand and he promptly takes it softly and kisses it saying, and I've been waiting for your arrival all night, darling. I couldn't help but blush as I drifted into bliss and out of time and space, settling into my new role with an eager sort of grace.